Welcome back. As promised, today we'll delve into the twisted world of one of history's most notorious killers, Ed Gein. I've put together some AI art for us to enjoy while listening, so prepare yourselves as we dive deeper into his sick, deranged mind and unveil the horrific creations he crafted. Grab a drink and get ready. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Let's go. Ed Gein grew up on a farm with his father, mother, and brother. His childhood was a very secluded one, just as his mother preferred. She was devoutly religious and instilled in her sons, the core values and beliefs that the world outside them, in every way, was evil, especially women. Ed's father was an abusive alcoholic and taxidermist. He taught Ed and Henry, Ed's brother, how to tan hides, manipulate skin, and use almost every part of the animals they hunted. Ed's father died from heart failure during his preteen years. Because of this, Ed and Henry were left to care for the farm and crops. Ed dropped out of school at the age of 13 to come home and help his brother and mother. The Gein boy's mother taught them everything she thought they needed to know anyway. Women are whores, and the world is evil. Though Henry didn't entirely accept this. As he got older, he started challenging the morals he'd been taught and questioning the ideals his mother had planted within him. Ed was not fond of this at all. Ed worshipped his mother and idolized her. She would never be wrong in his eyes. Ed and Henry didn't seem to agree, but still, they worked together to keep the family alive. One day, while tending the fields, a brush fire broke out near the farm. Henry and Ed rushed over to fight the fire and extinguish the brush before it reached their crops or home. When things got too bad, Ed left Henry and went to get help. Upon returning with authorities, Ed led them to where, unfortunately, Henry had died. The coroner deemed Henry's death a heart attack with head trauma. It seemed he had the heart attack and fell on some hard rocks, bruising his head. After Henry's death, Ed's mother, Augusta, truly was never the same. The death of her son was too much for her to bear, but Ed cherished and idolized his mother. He was glad to have some alone time with Mommy. She soon suffered a stroke and was disabled. Ed cared for his mother in every way one could care for another human being. He would even sit in bed with her and stroke and comfort her. Shortly after the first, she suffered a second stroke. This one was fatal. Ed had sadly lost his precious mother. He bawled like a child at her funeral, and the townspeople of Plainfield felt truly bad for Ed. They extended their condolences and reached out many kindnesses. He was now all alone. Ed frequented the cemetery where his mother was buried. He visited her often. He missed her. Many people said he was a decent man and would often make jokes or bring a smile to everyone who spoke with him. He was sort of odd, but not in a bad way, and the town still accepted him and cared for him. One day a tavern owner went missing, Mary Hogan. The town was so small that when one person was gone, everyone knew it. People waited and looked, but never found Mary. Ed, being the odd guy he was, simply couldn't believe it, or so the town thought. He would say things like, Mary isn't missing, she's up at the house, and odd little things like that. Everyone sort of overlooked this because of Ed's dwindling mental health since his mother died. A few years later, a hardware store owner, Bernice Warden, went missing as well. Her son, Frank, noticed her disappearance when he came into the shop one day after deer hunting. He noticed a puddle of blood in the shop floor and alerted the town and police rapidly. Frank had a feeling that Ed was involved or knew something about his mother's disappearance. He had noticed Ed frequenting the store and sort of bothering his mother a little in the recent weeks. He must know something at least. As authorities looked for clues, they found a receipt for a half gallon of antifreeze made out to Ed Gein. It was the last receipt Mrs. Warden made before her disappearance. This led police to start a full investigation centered around Ed Gein, their first suspect. Two sets of lawmen were sent out, one set to find Gein and two officers to search his premises. Ed was found at a neighbor's house having dinner, as he often would. The town people were very good to Gein. He was brought in for questioning and confessed to the murder of Bernice Warden and Mary Hogan. But that isn't even the worst part, not even the beginning. Once at the Gein homestead, police couldn't get into the house. They decided to go around back to what was known then as the Summer Kitchen. 
They broke open the door and found there was no electricity, but they did notice what they thought to be, at first glance, a deer carcass. With the dim light of their flashlights, they prodded forward to take a closer look, and upon their horrific discovery, revealed that what they thought was a swinging deer carcass was in fact Mrs. Warden. Strung by the ankles, gutted, decapitated, and hanging from the rafters, the two policemen fumbled towards the door, over piles of collected trash, and made it outside to empty the contents of their stomachs. What they just witnessed was something straight out of a horror film, but in real life. They had never, and thought they would never, see anything so grotesque. Regaining their composure, they went back into the house. They found thousands of body parts and pieces of the dead. A non-comprehensive list but the best I can find includes 12 human skulls, a jar of noses, a jar of lips, a curtain pole made of lips, several pornographic magazines, many works of literature that were themed around torture and dismemberment, a lampshade of skin, chairs upholstered of skin and bones, ashtrays and bowls made from skulls, molds of women's dead faces, actual masks of human skin, a belt made of nipples, a corset made of bone and skin, a wastebasket made of skin, a pair of leggings made of women's legs, skulls as bedposts, a vest made of skin and breasts, a dress made of skin, a box made of bones, a box of female genitalia, some painted and adorned with ribbons, a skin apron, a necklace of tongues, a pair of gloves made from human hands and fingers, among many other strange and macabre artifacts. Listed were only some of the most shocking. But how did Gein get all of the parts to make these items? Remember, he spent lots of time in the cemetery visiting his mother. There, he could also see where fresh graves were being dug. He would wait, dig up the graves at night, and steal the parts of the corpses that he wanted. Gein only confessed to the murder of two women. The bodies were exhumed of some of the graves he dug up, and they were in fact missing just random parts. Oh and remember the mysterious accident how his brother died. After his brutal crimes were discovered, people started wondering if Henry's death was in fact an accident. People still question this to this day. Ed never revealed the truth about Henry. Back to Ed's creations. How did he learn to craft these items? He learned from years of being a farmhand and from helping his dad with taxidermy. A lot of his creations were implied to have been the result of many experiments. It's thought that Ed's fascination with skin really geared up after his mother died. He started exploring the world and was heavily influenced by the literature he was reading. Why did he do it? He aimed to create a universe outside of his own reality, where he could control them, wear them, absorb their essence. He didn't just own these items as relics. He used the functional items and actually wore them. He unveiled that he would don the skins and mask and trample around his yard pretending to be his mother. He truly believed by wearing his victims that he could become them, spiritually. He would give anything to reclaim his relationship with his late mother, and any woman that had a speck of resemblance towards her needed to be his. If he could only create a dark world filled with pieces of his mother, maybe then he would feel whole again. In fact, he tried to dig up her grave and bring her back home, but the area of the graveyard she was buried in was too sandy, and so her coffin was made of cement, so the heavy sand would not collapse the coffin and sink in. In the twelve years before his arrest and after his mother's death, Ed created a world full of his perverse passions and a place he could be alone and partake in the grotesque facade that he was becoming the women he wore. Ed died from cancer in 1984 at Wisconsin Prison and was buried. His horrific legacy inspired the entire genre of horror movies. Too many to name here. Well, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.